Hello and welcome to Stem Cells in Your Face, where we try to explain science in a way that even I can understand. Our eyes are a vital part of everything that we do. And most of us couldn't even imagine what life would be like without them. Yeah, right? I can't imagine functioning without my iPhone. And I'd be lost without my iPad. Hey Siri, what's up? Ay ay ay, not those kinds of eye. This kind. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high or dale and hill. A poet, or some equally clever chap, once wrote that the eyes are the windows to the soul. But what happens when those windows become cloudy or even broken and you can no longer see through them? I was six years old when they did the eye test at school and they show you the E and they say, which way is the E going? And I look inside the projector and I don't see anything. And they told my parents, she is very nearsighted. And that was the first. And I was not diagnosed with RP until I was about, I think I was 26. Now, RP stands for retinitis pigmentosa. It's an incurable, inherited disease, and it slowly erodes the cells in the retina. That's the light-sensitive area in the back of the eye that's responsible for vision. RP affects every part of my life. I, the inability to see is, is difficult. I can't walk out of my home without the assistance of someone. The disease initially destroys retina cells that are responsible for your peripheral vision and that gives sufferers this kind of tunnel view of the world. But eventually, the damage also spreads to cells responsible for central vision. I have lost most of my central vision, so I'm not able to recognize family, friends, anyone. I'm on a voice recognition solely. But there's potentially some really good news for people with retinitis pigmentosa, because the stem cell agency is funding a clinical trial, and it's led by Dr. Henry Klassen of the University of California, Irvine. In RP, photoreceptors, the cells in the retina that actually allow us to sense light, become sick and they gradually stop working. Klassen's approach is to inject retina stem cells into the eye. These cells then release proteins that trigger signals in the eye and it's hoped that these signals will rescue the photoreceptors and preserve or even restore vision. A cure for RP would mean independence for me. It would mean I would play a, a bigger role as a parent. I would do more things. I would help out more. For Rosie to gain, gain her vision, it would just it, it'd be life-changing for us. Now, RP is not the only disease affecting vision that we're tackling. The stem cell agency is also funding a clinical trial in age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. Dr. Dennis Clegg of UC Santa Barbara is a co-leader of that clinical trial team. Macular degeneration is one of the leading causes of blindness in the elderly population in the world and especially in the United States. And it involves loss of vision in the central part of the visual field, which is so important for high acuity vision and for everyday life. Now macular degeneration is caused by the death of cells just outside the retina. These are called retinal pigmented epithelium or RPE. And these cells are the life support system for photoreceptors. In macular degeneration, the RPEs in the central portion of the retina start dying off, causing photoreceptors to malfunction, and that in turn leads to vision loss. And the impact is huge. This is how a healthy eye sees the world. And this is what that same view looks like with macular degeneration. To prevent that, Dr. Clegg and the research team have transformed human embryonic stem cells into replacement RPE cells, which are grown on a thin synthetic sheet. And the idea is to then put those in the back of the eye and replace the cells that are dying and hopefully prevent any further loss of vision. Now vision loss comes in many different forms and affects tens of millions of people worldwide. And that's why the Stem Cell Agency is investing more than $100 million in 17 different projects to find solutions. And each approach is different in its own way. And there's a reason for that. Sometimes I like to compare it to the beginning of the space program. There are a lot of ways you can build a rocket ship. We don't know which one's going to get to the moon, but it's worth trying all of these 
to see what works best for patients. Seeing what works best for patients to help patients see. And that's Stem Cells in Your Face for today. We'll see you next time.